4.5 negative and 0 exponents. Now we've dealt with positive exponents before and you should be somewhat familiar with those but a negative exponent or a zero exponent, that might be pretty new to you. So we're gonna define those here, but first let's consider this pattern. I have two to the fourth power, which is two times two times two times two is 16. I have two to the third power, two times two times two is eight. Two to the second power, two times two is four. Two to the first power, that's just two, which of course is just two. You can see that I'm decreasing one in my exponents and I'm dividing by two each time. 16 divided by 2 is 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now if I continue that pattern and drop this down by 1, I get 0 as an exponent. So if I take this and I divide this by 2, 2 divided by 2, that should be a 1. That's different. Now if I subtract again and make this 1 less, I go from 0 to negative 1. Now if I take this and divide by 2, oops, divide by 2, smeared it a little bit there, 1 divided by 2, that will give me 1 half. That looks weird. And then, if I do it one more time, subtract 1 from the exponent, I go from negative 1 to negative 2, and that means I have to divide by 2 again. So a half divided by 2, which is 1 fourth, or better yet, 1 fourth, let's think of it as 1 over 2 squared. And this is like 1 over 2 to the first. I see a negative 1 here, I see a positive 1, I see a negative 2 here, I see a positive 2. There appears to be a pattern. And that pattern is hopefully explained better with this definition. Negative and zero exponents. For any non-zero number a, a to the zero power is always 1. That means 10 to the zero power is 1, 100 to the zero power is 1, negative 100 to the zero power is 1, negative 1 half to the zero power is one. Any non-zero number raised to the zero power is one. If you're wondering what zero to the zero power is, wait till you get to calculus and they'll explain it there. Now, for any non-zero number a and any integer n, a to the opposite of n is equal to one over a to the n. That's what was going on here. You see, this was to a negative one, then it's to a positive one. This is to a negative two, this is a positive two, by putting it one over the expression. So that means, for these examples, well first off, anything to the zero power is just one. That's easy. But seven to the negative five means one over seven to the positive five. The expression is not negative, the exponent was negative. But that, what this means is it's one over this base to the opposite or positive five power here. This one here, see how the y is to the negative three? Not the two, just the y. So this is equal to 2 times 1 over y to the positive 3. That's what y to the negative 3 means. And of course, 2 is like 2 over 1. So if I multiply the tops and the bottoms, I get 2 over y to the third. That's what that simplifies to. That's kind of wild. Look at the next example. This is almost the same kind of a problem. This is 14 times 1 over g to the positive 8. That's what g to the negative 8 means. Now the 14 is now raised to the power. If I wanted the 14 raised to the negative 8 power, I'd put parentheses around it. So this is 14 times 1 over g to the 8, which is the same as 14 over 1, or I get 14 all over g to the 8 power. That's my answer right there. That's without a negative exponent. Now I've got three more examples here. I have negative exponents, zero exponents. Let's see what we can do to simplify these, get rid of the negative exponent. This is 1 over x to the third. This is just y to the second power, which we can put over 1 if it helps. So you can see y squared all over x to the third power. It's as if this expression zips down below into the denominator by changing the sign of the exponent. This is uh, a to the negative 5 times b to the 0. Of course, b to the 0 is just 1, so you have a to the negative 5 times 1, which is 1 over a to the fifth. That's what a to the negative 5 is. Now here's a good one. You see you have 4 times m to the negative 4 times n to the third. This is the only part that's a concern, the m to the negative 4. So just like I was trying to show you below how it kind of, over here, how it kind of sneaks down below, I'm going to write this as 4n to the third, and this is going to come down below as m to the positive fourth. That's a little different. you got to get kind of used to that, seeing that negative exponent. We have to deal with them from time to time. Now, 
In these last two examples that I have on the screen here, I'm writing these without a fraction bar. I'm going to need the negative exponent. So I'm kind of reversing this. I have 1 over 36, which is the same as 1 over 6 squared. I'm going to write 1 over 6 squared as 6 to the negative 2. That way I don't need a fraction bar. Over here, remember how I brought this guy down below and changed the sign of the exponent? Well, I'm just going to reverse this. I'm going to bring this guy from below up above, and I'm going to change the exponent to a negative. I'm going to get 8d to the third e to the negative 7. And that's how I can write that expression without the use of a fraction bar. Okay, now we're going to combine with uh, negative exponents and zero exponents with what we learned in the last section as far as multiplying and dividing exponential expressions. Let's look right here. We have 3 to the negative 7th times 3 to the 11th. We're going to write this expression without a negative or a zero exponent. I am going to use the product because the bases are the same. This is add the exponents. 3 to the negative 7 plus a positive 11. That's a positive 4. 3 to the 4th. There's my answer. It's got, it does not have a negative exponent. Here, I am multiplying again, 0 0.5. I add the exponents, I do get a negative 15. So, using the definition of negative exponents, this is 1 over 0 0.5 to the positive 15. Over here, now in algebra 2, we would take this a step further, but for right now, we're okay. Here, I'm going to keep the base the same. I'm going to add the exponents. It comes out to a positive 4. I don't have to even manipulate that one. That one's done. Now here I'm dividing, so I subtract the exponents. So 2 minus a negative 8. 2 minus a negative 8. That's like adding the opposite. That's 10. That one worked out nice. 7 to the 10th power. 2 minus negative 8. You subtract the exponents when the bases are the same. I'm going to do the same thing here. The 5. And then k to the 3 minus negative 9 minus a negative 9 is plus a positive 9. That's to the 12th. Here I'm going to subtract the exponent. 17 to the 5 minus a negative 3. That's the same as 5 plus 3. That's to the 8th. So no negative exponents there. Looking good. Now this one looks a little intriguing. I subtract the exponents here. I have to be extra careful. Negative 2 minus a negative 6. That's the same as adding the opposite. That's a positive 4, so that's simplified nicely. And then over here, kind of like I had above it, I have the coefficient of 10, but I subtract the exponents. 4 minus a negative 4 is a positive 8, so this is a to the 8. And that's my answer right there. So if you're careful and you combine your properties, you can simplify these values. Now this last one's a little off the beaten trail a bit, but I'm going to show you how you can use exponents for this. It says a meter is equivalent to a thousand millimeters and a kilometer is a thousand meters. What is a millimeter in kilometers? Well, a millimeter is pretty small and kilometers are pretty big, so it's going to be a pretty small number. So what you have to think of is if you're changing a meter, uh, a millimeter into meters, there's a thousand millimeters, you would have to take one and you would have to divide by a thousand, which is the same as one over ten to the third. Now I'm going to change a meter into a kilometer, and there's a thousand meters that make up a kilometer, so that's the same ratio. I'm going to have to take this 1 over 10 to the third and multiply it times 1 over 10 to the third. I'm going to get 1 over, add the exponents, 10 to the sixth power. So that's a fairly small number. That's 1 over a 1 with six zeros, or 1 over a million. So 1 millionth of a kilometer is a millimeter. So it's a fairly small amount. So you need to practice these problems with uh, the exponents, with the positive and negative exponents and the zero exponents, because it never really goes away in algebra. Most of you guys will be taking more algebra after this class, and you're going to be seeing this again in more detail with more properties of exponents, because there are several more properties. So remember, practice, practice, practice.